In this segment, we're going to cover part two of the removing the brake pads and caliper mounting bracket. We've already got the brake pads off, so um, part two will be removing caliper mounting brackets. Once the pads are out, to remove the rear, the rear caliper bracket, it uses two 14 millimeter bolts that are located on the back side. I know they'll be hard to see from that camera angle, but they're just pretty much directly behind where the top portion of the caliper bracket hangs over the rotor there. And these are considerably tighter than the calipers themselves. Require a little bit of extra torque to get them break free. And once again, as you see, I kind of braced myself and gave a good solid hard yank on the ratchet. And um, that, that initial good yank is kind of what's required sometimes to break the, the bolt initially free. And when I did so, I positioned my body back from the car because when I yanked that hard amount of force, if it should happen to move the car or want a tendency to slide it off the jack stands, my body set aside from the vehicle. So if it should go down, I'll have adequate clearance and not be in the, the path of injury. Once I break that one free, I just want to come down and get the other one before we try and take them both off. Now the next bolt down, it's got a little bit of a clearance issue with the rear trailing arm. And that trailing arm is what centers that rear axle and holds it in and gives it the ability to have the suspension movement up and down. And behind where the bolt's located, there's a limited amount of clearance between the nut or the bolt itself and the trailing arm. It makes it a little bit difficult to get the socket and ratchet in there. Sometimes you have to come at it with a couple different angles until it slides on easily. And once it's on there, you just gotta go ahead and break it free again. Now this awkward situation, over on this side of the car, I don't have much movement uh, room to apply any torque. Um, I can't get my body weight behind it. Um, this would be one of those times where it would be good to switch positions and use a pushing force on it. And as you can see from this position, I've got more available space in, in order to get some um, torque applied to the ratchet. It'll make it easier for me to break that bolt free. And in this particular situation, if my hand or the ratchet come off of the bolt should go forward, I could easily smack my fist into that inner fender well, damaging my knuckles. So while pushing forward, I'm gonna keep an open hand. And that way if anything slips, I've got an open hand to just push out and grab contact. And I can spread the force of that impact across the whole open hand rather than displacing it on a very small area of my knuckles, which uh, damage easily. Okay, now I've got that broken free. I'll just go ahead and remove both the bolts um, with my fingers and I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the other position because it's better accessibility for camera angles. And again, as before with the other bolts, it's easier to, uh, once you've got them breaking free, if they move freely with your fingers, get a little bit more clearance in there and it's easier to do it and faster with your fingers than it is with a ratchet. They have lock washers on the bolts as well. And I just want to make sure that each one of them's got it and you keep it with the bolt. And I'll just continue removing this second bolt with my fingers. And this is one of those applications where uh, one of the newer style ratchet wrenches, where one end of the box wrench is enclosed and it's got a ratchet device in it where the wrench will slide over the nut or socket or bolt that you're using. And it allows you to, that ratchet movement back and forth, whereas the old style box wrench you would have to put it on, you get so much churn, you have to take it off and regrip and get another bite to make a certain amount of movement again. The ratchet wrench would have went in there easily in the space area that we had to work with and it could have made the job easier. And that's the difference. We can get the job done with these uh, minimal amount of tools, but there's always specialty tools of that design that can make the job easier and faster for you. And if you do a lot of your, home, your own home maintenance and auto repair and stuff of that nature, the, some of those specialty tools can really be a, a good asset to your tool set. For most practical, extensive, um, or for the bare minimum to get you by, a basic tool set will do the job. And at, as you go along and see, there's a lot of tools that can make it easier and faster, but they're really not required to get the job done. Okay, after removing the second bolt, once again, make sure the lock washer is there, keeping the bolts together, we'll set them apart with all the other parts here in just a minute. After both of those are removed, the caliper mounting bracket comes right off, just slides out. That'll conclude 
the caliper mounting bracket part two, please watch our next segment on um, rotors. <laughs>